Hello, my name is Lars Hornhoff. I'm a professor for business administration with a particular focus on financial services and financial technology at the University of Bremen. And my name is Elisa Stenzorn. I'm a PhD student at last year. So Lars, we're two of the authors that wrote a paper together. And what have we been analyzing in our paper? We have been investigating equity crowdfunding, which is a new phenomenon in entrepreneurial finance, where a large group of investors uh, is funding a firm or a project, and in the end they retain a financial interest in this firm. So far in the literature, we have seen that a lot of uh, papers are investigating whether these firms can actually obtain funding from a platform and from individuals on these platforms. But our paper is one of the first investigating whether these firms can build enduring businesses after they run an equity crowdfunding campaign. And can you say something about how we did it? Uh, so we did an empirical study and uh, we used some of the traditional methods in econometrics. So we run uh, dichotomous uh, dependent variable regressions and we also run uh, survival analyses and uh, our dependent variable was whether these firms either obtain follow-up funding by an outside business angel or an outside venture capitalist. And on the other hand, we looked at whether these firms were dissolved or went into bankruptcy and failed simply. And what can we learn about the determinants of follow-up funding? So what we learned was the following. So first of all, we saw a difference between Germany and the UK. So in total, we investigated 430 firms on 13 platforms. And what we saw was that uh, the firms that got funding in uh, Germany had a higher likelihood later on to obtain follow-up funding, which personally surprised me. And uh, we also found that uh, these firms uh, had a higher likelihood to obtain follow-up funding in the first 18 months after the campaign. And later on, it became much more unlikely or much less likely to obtain follow-up funding uh, uh, after this period. Uh, we also looked at the determinants of uh, follow-up funding and we found that uh, three variables were interesting. Uh, first was uh, the management team and uh, this was the size of the management team. So the larger the management team was, uh, apparently the higher was their likelihood to get uh, things done and accomplish something. And the higher was also the likelihood that they obtained follow-up funding in the end. Second, we looked at uh, the age of the management team because we thought if you're more senior, you might actually be more likely to get follow-up funding by a venture capitalist later on, but that was not true. So apparently outside venture capitalists or business angels like if you're young and more dynamic and uh, if you run an equity crowdfunding campaign, you're more likely to get uh, funding later on if you're more the young, uh, young type of person. And uh, third, uh, we also looked at uh, initial venture capitalists and uh, we found that uh, having an initial venture capitalist board uh, is a good signal for outside venture capitalists later on, which is in line with the traditional literature. Interestingly though, we found that a couple of variables that are found in the traditional literature on venture capital uh, that are relevant as a signal for follow-up funding uh, haven't played a role. For instance, we looked at trademarks and patents, uh, but they weren't that relevant uh, to obtain follow-up funding after you received an equity crowdfunding uh, campaign and uh, look for money later on. So Elisa, we just talked about follow-up funding and what drives investments by outside business angel or venture capital investors uh, after an equity crowdfunding campaign has taken place. My question would now be, can you say anything about the determinants of firm failure once such a campaign has taken place? So before running the regression models, we again checked whether there are differences between German and UK firms. And what we find is that UK firms have a higher probability of surviving three years after the latest equity crowdfunding. The regression, regression results show that the number of senior management team members have a negative effect on the probability to fail. The same applies for the total amount that has been raised during the previous equity crowdfunding campaigns. Because some firms, they actually ran several campaigns and only did this one. Interestingly, firm valuation has a positive effect on the probability for a firm to fail. And the same applies for the number of initial venture capital investors. Okay, that is very interesting. So my question would be, now that we have these results, can we claim that there is a causal relationship or is it just that we run one regression and now we are claiming that there is this result uh, between these variables and our dependent variable or do we have any robustness checks to back this up? Yeah, we performed several robustness checks. So first we ran also accelerated failure time models with an exponential and a Bible distribution and our results remain largely consistent. Furthermore, we performed a mediation analysis because you could argue that, that follow-up funding mediates the effect of the explanatory variables on firm failure, but we did not find an effect that mediation has taken place. 
And lastly, you could argue that since we only focus on the successful equity crowdfunding campaigns, that our data set faces a sample selection bias due to incorrect randomization. Luckily, we also have data on the unsuccessful campaigns in Germany. So we were able to run the Heckman selection model and we did not find an effect. So the, the unobservables from the first stage are not correlated with the unobservables from the second stage. Okay, that is very interesting. So a final question that remains is, can we say anything about practical implications of the study? Uh, what did we find out in terms of uh, what should policymakers now do, or uh, can we say anything about uh, polling managers and what they should do? Or There are two implications. First is that our study helps to differentiate between lemons and dairy businesses. So it's actually quite helpful for portal managers and investors, because there is still a lack of trust. And secondly, you could say, well, there are these differences between UK and German firms, and why is that? Well, in the UK, UK firms typically offer real equity shares that come with the traditional control rights of a limited liability company attached. In Germany, however, you have different contracts, such as silent partnerships that have little or no control rights at all. And this might have an impact on the performance of the startup's management team. Thank you very much, Elisa. That was very interesting. So, and can you say something? Yes, so before running the. First in. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hello, my name. Um, oh, okay. Oh. We have been investigating equity crowdfunding, which is. <laughs> can you say anything about our study, what we found out about firm failure? Yes, I can. So, <laughs> <laughs> on the equity prop, uh, equity crowdfunding platform, uh, how? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, we first did a comparison between survival <laughs> outside uh, business angel venture capital investors, <laughs> uh, and we try to find out about that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>